Hi, Pete. Can you hear me okay? Have I got any sound? You can just give me the thumbs up, guys. Anybody? Just to let me know. Yes, thank you, Neil. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody, somebody to say that they can hear me. It's my uh, worst nightmare that nobody can hear me and it'd just be like a silent movie for the evening. And I hope you're all well. It's nice to see lots of uh, old faces and old names. A couple of new, new names, which is cool. Give everybody a, a moment to, to come and find us and to log themselves on. Ah, Mr. Bentley, how are you? Hey, Derek. Good to see you. No worries, Dave. I'm sure we'll catch up soon. Yes, Dylan, just for you, a natural, a natural dry fly pattern here in front of us. Just for you Welsh boys that like to fish it under a bung. Vaguely forgot then that I'm actually Welsh as well. So um, actually I just dissed myself really then, didn't I? Evening, Tony. There are lots of... Uh, um, Really nice, cool stuff for you tonight. Um, a few oldies, a few newies, and a few different techniques, different materials and things that I'm going to throw in. Um, and uh, it's good to be back on air, actually. It's good to be back live. Um, it's been, well, last April was the last time I did did a live tying session. Um, and it's uh, it's nice to be back up, and it is really nice to, uh, to see all of you guys uh, joining me as well um <clears throat> right then folks so as you can probably tell uh the fly is the star okay um and this is going to be our first uh my first offering for you guys tonight so this is a, a fly that um you know it, it's basically a blue flash damsel let's face it um but i put in a few tweaks and um it's what you know just a, this nice cloak just on the front and i've used it over the last well, this winter, actually, particularly when I've been out with clients on the still waters. And my God, does it catch fish. Um, on Tuesday, uh, we had nine to it um, and uh, we lost about seven or eight others. And, the, and they were really hitting it really, really hard. Now, um, to be fair, you could say, well, it was it was a lure and they're always going to take it. But they wouldn't touch a cat's whisker, which is very strange because that's always one that does really well um, at me on springs. Um, I don't think I'm on mute, Dylan. Can everybody hear me? Dylan seems to be having one or two issues. Yep, must be your end, Dill. Must be your end, mate. Okay, right, so let's get on to the tie-in of this. Um, uh, quite a few of these materials, or well, at least some of these materials, are available from Lost Lake Fly um, uh, on the website. Um, but let's get started. So um, we're going to use good old Camasan B830 for this. Um, it's one. Um, <laughs> it's one of my favourites. Um, it's a good all rounder, and it never really lets you down. Um, and added onto that, I'm going to put on a. Uh, 3.3 mil anodized blue bead at the front. Now you can put tungsten on if you want to get it much deeper, that much quicker. Um, but I'm just going to put a 3.3 mil. If you want to get it down deeper, but not as fast as tungsten, of course, up it to a 3.8 or a 4 mil bead. Um, I just think it sets off this fly particularly well. Um, and I'm going to use some semperfly spider thread for this um because i had it on my bobbin um and um and it's in olive 
and it's a 12 volt. Okay, so uh, on we go. So I'm going to catch on and I'm going to take my tying thread all the way down the shank. Now it's a long shank hook, so we're going to pack quite a lot of material into this. So we've got long shank, and I'm going to take my tying thread down in line with the barb of the hook, and then I'm going to take it halfway back up again, just get rid of that tag end. Um, don't need to be totally touching turns, but a good even base is going to set up your fly really, really well. Now for the tail, I'm going to use good old marabou. Um, so I've got some some olive marabou here. And you could go dark olive, light olive. Um, this is a this is a light olive, um, and I'm going to just strip off about an inch and a half of fluffy bits um, I got told the other day that I'm not putting enough in my tails um, and I disagree I don't like a really big bushy tail on my on my damsels I like them when they're in the water to be really sleek like the body of a damsel so that it pulses like this and if you've got too much it just bunch and it, and it doesn't look natural and um and I catch enough fish, um, so, you know, can't be that bad. Um, so I want it about one and a half times the length of my shank. So I'm just going to grip it, pinch, tighten up, and then tie it down back towards the bend of the hook. There we go. See, to me, that's perfect. It's not too long, not too bushy. Um, and if I need to shorten it, I can just pinch it off. And, uh, I, and I don't get many tail bites and the, the fish actually just engulf it. Um, and I'm just going to tidy this up nice and even. I always like to get it so that there's no uneven bulk and in the body. Taking my time just to even that bit out. There we go. Okay, so there she is. And then into that tail, I'm going to put my blue flash, which is um, uh, literally, what have I done with it? It's here somewhere. Um, it's, it's just, oh, there it is. Um, it's holographic blue flash. This is a medium. You can use small. Um, I just have medium handy. And I'm just going to put one strip of this either side of the tail. So strip not right to the end of the tail but just in from that I'll tie that down and do the same on the other side oh. making sure I get the curve where the uh, tinsel's been on the spool, I get the curve going in towards the tail. So two just to catch in and then lock that down, bring it back towards the bend of the hook. And then I'm going to take it all the way back up to the bead to catch down all that extra material back to the middle. And you can see we've got our flash in there already. Okay. Um, yeah, it's all in. Um, now, I always like, this is something I've always done, um, and, and I know that Kieran Nason um, thinks that it's a real game changer, is I then like to put in some crystal flash into the tail. And I think he's got a point. I really do. Um, and I think it picks up UV light really well. It reflects light that's being refracted through the water. Um, and those fish just can't resist it. So I'm going to do the same thing. So I've got my three pieces. You can go four if you like, but I found three is more manageable. Um, and I'm just going to bring it underneath my tying thread to this side. And then I can just draw it back so it's the right length. And I'm going to tie it down on the side of the hook shank. Three locking turns in. And then a trim in line with the bead. I notice I'm not trimming short because I don't want to leave any steps in the body 
I want to keep it all nicely uh, proportioned. And then I'm going to, going to do the same on the other side. So we've got six strands all together, three on each side. doesn't matter if they, they don't sit perfectly side by side. Um, just take your time with this one. There we go. One, two. And then you can just position. And come in. And just take out that section there. Now, same as again, same as before, sorry. I'm going to take it all the way back down to the bend of the hook. And then I'm going to take it all the way back up to the bead. And then all the way back down again. And you're going to find you might have the little bit that's just sticking out. I'll just trim that off. There we go. So tail, tailing done. Now, if I'm making lots of these, I'll often make all the tails and, and make them with the tails, tie off, have a whole row of them, and then come in and do all the bodies together. I find it's a far more economical way of tying them. Um, but it also helps to have all the material out. So for the body material, I'm going for, um, for this um, Uphaven uh, Straggle Hackle. Um, this is Blue Flash Damsel, 8 mils. Um, we sell this on the website. Um, and it's a really good alternative um, for your blue flash damsel bodies. And it's a bit of a fritz. Um, and, but it's very easy to work with. And it produces a body shape and the colours in the body that really do attract those fish. So I'm going to bring it in under and just catch it at the base of the tail. One, two three locking turns just hold that in place and then i'm just going to nip off the waste material at that end this is where it can get very bulky so by keeping everything trimmed down you can really control the profile of the fly so there we have it now with fritz and this is as close as you'll ever get me tying a blob um it does have a tendency to twist which is fine now, what I like to do is I like to take get that twist out so that all of the fibres, if I can get them, are pointing in one direction like this. And then I've got the the core of the fritz, which is a, on this um, upaven fritz, is a flat um, is a flat section. And I'm going to use that flat section to my advantage because I'm going to use that to tie, to to meet the hook shank. And as I bring it round, I'm just going to draw. There we go. I'm just going to draw everything back each time, so I'm not trapping down any of the frits in front. You might trap down one or two pieces. It's not a problem. A little bit of moisture. There we go. And keep going. It's amazing how much. Um, fritz you'll actually get on these long shank hooks so generally you need about four to five inches of fritz to maximize and oh, sorry to minimize wastage of the fritz because we're always going to have little bits and we're going to keep going keep going gradually just making sure that the twist is out there we go draw it back draw it back keep drawing there we go. And I'm going to take it right up to the bead. But not so close that I'm packing it so tightly that I can't get anything else in there. And once more up. And I'm going to finish with the fritz at the top. And then I'm going to put a locking turn. One, two, three locking turns. And then trim off the fritz. So there we have it so far. And now I've got my locking turns there. I just need to tie that down. And at the moment, that bead is still a little bit loose. Not a problem. I'm going to build up a slight thread down just behind it. And just tie it down. Now you could, <coughs> you could just put a bit of dubbing on that and leave it. 
um, and that's good enough. But I like to play with stuff, as most of you know, um, and um, I just, I had quite a few, and I've got loads of French partridge feathers, like this. And uh, this is a yellow French partridge, and I just love the colour of this. Um, and I decided that I was going to produce a cloak, because I had this vision of it pulsing out of the front as well. Um, so I stripped off all of the fluffy bits, and then I'm just going to take the tip of the partridge feather, I'm going to tease back the feather, so it's pointing towards the base of the feather, so it's like, like, like this, okay, and then, because partridge feathers are very thick, at the base end, you don't want to tie them in at that end. So we're going to tie it in at the tip. And I'm just going to offer the tip up in line with the bead at a 45 degree angle. And then I'm just going to catch it in with my tying thread once, twice, three times, and then once behind it. And it, sh and it generally, the tip then kicks backwards. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my scissors. Now I'm not going to cut it flush with the bead i'm going to cut it and, um, and leave about two two to three mils because it acts as an anchor point and it even if you pull a little bit hard it shouldn't come out i'm just going to put an extra turn in just for luck and there we have it now the good thing about partridge feathers is they've got this really tough stem here that acts like a little mini set of hackle pliers and they're quite long so um and these are flank feathers so they're they're pretty robust so i'm just going to draw all of these feathers or these barbules back towards the tail of the fly taking my time to do it i'm not going to rush a little bit of moisture and when i'm ready i'm going to put in a turn making sure i'm not twisting my feather and i'm going to come up put a second turn in you could leave it there if you want it sparse, um, I quite like it quite chunky. I'm just going to take my time so I'm not trapping anything. Make sure I get that tag end in as well. There we go. Three. And then I'm going to finish with my feather at the top. Wiggle it a bit so I don't trap down too many fibres. So put in a couple of locking turns there. Just two for the moment. And then I'm going to come in with my scissors and I'm just going to come down. I'm just going to nip the stem of the feather and then pull. And any loose bits just come out. And then I'm just going to push back with my fingers. And then I'm just going to put some turns in to really lock that into place and push it all the way back so you can already see the effect that we're starting starting to get and this cloak i was watching it in the water on tuesday and it really does pulse when you when you give it that those really quick jerks it pulses in and out and uh, the fish just couldn't resist it um now you could of course leave it like that you could tie it off you could then put on um, I don't know, uh, uh, a red collar. Um, but what I like to do is I just like to take a little bit of dubbing. And I'm going to use uh, this old packet of dubbing. I've had some of these hanging around for about 30 years. So um, this is some Flyrite um, uh, um, uh, extra fine poly dubbing. And I like it because, I don't know if you can see this, it's got these this beautifully variegated sort of effect through it. Um, and... I just need a tiny, tiny little pinch. No more than this. There it is. No more than that. And I'm just going to offer it up to my thread. And just lo loosely and lightly dub it on. And because it's a poly yarn, it, it'll just sit like a proper noodle. Whereas natural furs often, by now, they'd have fallen off, wouldn't they? Um, and I'm going to put one turn 
at the base of the feather and use that to hold the dubbing while I just tighten it. There we go. And then I'm going to use this just to tidy up that collar section. I could put in some UV, um, Henge UV in there. Um, mix it up, is what I say. Um, try different things. You know, that's what I do all the time. Just tweak and adjust. Missing a stage here. Um, and then to finish it off, I'm going to take some Sally Hansen. Tiny little bit. I'm just going to rub it onto my thread. <coughs> Excuse me for coughing. I'm just going to tighten that up. And one, two, three. Now that'll harden in there and secure it no matter what happens now. And then I'm going to come in with my whip finish just behind the bead. There we go. And trim off. And there we have it. So it's a blue flash damsel with a difference. Um, I've taken to calling it um, the French partridge damsel, um, the FPD. Um, but it just basically is one of many different types of damsels but i suggest you know if you fancy it have a go with it and see what see what happens this is the sort of fly that um actually at Lechlaid um uh resulted in my 47 pound bag for four with four fish um you know and everybody wanted to know what i was fishing with and in fact i gave a few away and the guys caught some fish so um it was really 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 good and that was last april actually i need to get back there so i hope you enjoyed that one um uh, what you can do with that is you can mix it up and um, here's another one and again we sell the fritz here so there we go have a look at this baby so uh, this is um, this is called the Roger the Dodger oh what have I done I've just pressed the wrong button never mind let's go back there we go um, you don't want to see my face um, this is called the Roger the Dodger it's got Dennis the Menace um, straggle in it. Okay, it's exactly the same process, but here I've put on the cloaking feather is a very large, very soft um, hen, black hen. <coughs> I've got a vision that I want to want to want to put um, a guinea fowl feather on it, and I've got some here. Um, I just need to dye them so that I get the black with the red red spots, and that's something um, that um, that. Um, I'm going to be looking at over the next couple of days because I've got loads of feathers here that I've got to dye. I've um, got loads of partridge wings, feather, um, pheasant wings, pheasant tails, squirrel, loads of stuff that I'm dyeing up at the moment. So watch this space. Um, and of course, you know, you then take that and swap out and put in a white tail, you know, um, just a variation. Um, uh, and uh, Or red tail, white body, you know. Combinations are endless, really. Okay, so I hope you like those. Oh, well, I'll drop that one. I'll have to find that one in a minute. Um, let's see. It's nice to see everybody here. Got 22 people. That's fantastic. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks, Stevie. Thanks, Dylan. Um, yeah, merging clinks, Dan. Yeah, the. Uh, um, that flash is great on there. Um, okay, cool. I hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget, um, if you've got any questions, um, put them up in the in the chat. And I'm sure um, we've all got enough experience here uh, where somebody will be able to answer it if, I, if I'm not available at that particular moment. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm sort of maximising flies tonight. So we're going to try and tie four flies. Um, and they're all flies that I've posted fairly recently so the next fly on the agenda um, is um, is the good old gold ribbed he gold ribbed hairsier um, but with a slight difference and it's one of my patterns um, I just tweak and I just adjust um, and I, you know and I just do it why do I tweak them and adjust them so I don't get bald when I'm tying um, but also because sometimes I observe various things with the insects themselves and 
and and, and I think to myself, do you know what? I need to need to imitate that, or I need to find a way to adjust for that. Um, so here we go. I'm going to put this is a a um, fully mill hook. So it's a um, what is it? It's a uh, 5085 Nymph Barbless Black Nickel. Um, a lot, I'm using this one because I'm a firm believer, as, as most of you know, that it's, fly tying is about using the right materials, but also the right hooks for the right flies. Um, and if you had a really short shank nymph hook here, um, you know, you're not going to be able to tie a, a, a half decent um, gold rib hairs here on there. But you need the longer body. You need the uh, a longer thorax on it, um, so slightly elongated um, hook is far better than a short shank. Um, so, um, but for this one, I'm also going to weight it. So I'm going to stick a little bit of um, flat lead. There it is, flat lead. It's adhesively backed. Um, I trimmed this with a scalpel off a off a thicker thicker sheet. It's about maybe one and a half mils thick and I'm just gonna remove the <coughs> cover from the back <coughs> excuse me and, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna bring in my um, my lead and I'm just gonna hold it at the position where the hook point is in line and just angle it ever so slightly back I don't want it to go all the way to the back of the fly um, and I'm just going to hook it over and then wind touching turns of lead six or seven turns and I'll do six or seven turns now I try desperately not to use my scissors to cut the lead so I'm going to use these little clippers that I've got wire cutters and then I'm just going to tidy up those ends there. Now that's going to be that's one one level of waiting, you know. Um, get we'll get the fly down a little bit quicker. But for this one, because I want a more tapered body, I'm actually going to bring my lead now up one, two wraps of the previous underbody. Hold it down, and I'm going to take my lead up does twist so take your time there we go and i'll just use my nail to take that bit off and i've got my underbody there so almost starting to look carrot shaped no unsightly bulk in there and if there is just use your nail just to push it all in and my thread this time i'm going to use um this fire orange uh, uni thread um, Ato for this and the reason I'm going to use the fire orange is because I, I want to leave um, a red head on it because in my box if if a fire one of the nymphs has a red head on it it often um, it will dictate to me that it's uh, it's got some weight in it in it and it's not um, a an unweighted nymph um, and I'm gonna come in and tie on about one and a half mils away from the eye I'm going to use my tag end just to guide all the way down and what I like to do is I like to trap the thread between the turns of lead I'm going to take it down in line with where the barb would be and then I can now make tighter turns and develop a nice thread base for the material that I'm going to put on to grip it doesn't have to be totally totally covered but you don't want lots of lead visible because you'll end up getting you know, anything that you're dubbing or put placing on it will start to spin i also don't want a step there right we'll bring that in and then take that off so there we go we've got our underbody in and now for the hairs mask so hairs mask how do i get it off well you can probably see a patch here um i use a, a little pair of beard trimmers um to take off um, and make up my dubbing and then, then sometimes i'll whiz it up in my coffee grinder 
Um, sometimes I will just pluck it, but I find that it, you get too many big clumps and it becomes a bit un, unwieldy. But for the tail, the bit that I want to target is these cheek sections here. Okay, these big fluffy cheek sections. There's loads of it around the back. Um, and it's lots of lots of longish guard hairs in there. Um, and for this, I'm going to use quite a fine pair of scissors. And I'm going to come in, just take my time, and take a pinch with my finger and forefinger and thumb, and then run the scissors in below my fingers, and then down towards as far as I can take them, and then a little snip. And then keep hold of them. Keep hold of it so that you've got it in your fingers and you should get something that looks a bit like that. Now that looks a lot, which it is, and we're going to do something with that in a minute. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, going to hold it with my thumb and finger there. And I've got this little, little rake, this fur rake, and I'm just going to rub the fur rake through the base to get rid of all that loose under fur. You can see how much it takes off, look. You can keep hold of that, it makes good dubbing. Um, but what this is doing is thinning out the rear section of the tail so you don't get a massive amount of bulk when you tie it in. And already it doesn't look as big. Okay, now what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to judiciously just pull out some of the more unsightly hairs, scarred hairs that are going in the wrong directions. There we go. And we thinned it out. And as you can see, just that piece is the length of the fly anyway. But for the tail, I want the tail to be about half the length of the shank. So it's quite a long tail. And remember that what we're trying to mimic here is a shrimp or a hog louse or something that primarily is going to be at the bottom of a lake or, or on the bottom of the of a slow flowing river. Pinch turn. Trap it down. There we go. And we're, we're in. There we go. There's our tail in. Now I'm going to take the tail. I'm going to take my thread, sorry, up to the base of the lead. And then I'm just going to put a 45 degree little trim. And then just tidy up. So I've now. Again, I'm not getting any unsightly bulges or bumps in my fly. Um, you'll get a bit of fluff. There we go. And it's nice and it's in. Now it's supposed to look scruffy. Okay, it is supposed to look scruffy. Um, so don't worry about it if it does. This whole point of this fly is that scruffy is the name of the game. Um, now we're going to put a rib in. Well, it's a gold ribbed hairs here, so I'm going to use some um, some uh, uni uh, soft wire in gold. OK, I'm going to use quite a thick. Um, this is uh, this is the small version, seven grams, but um, on the spool. But it's it's relatively thick. I could use a thinner one, but I actually want it to stand out. And I'm going to just nip a piece off. And I'm going to take my tying thread. Back up towards the middle. I'm going to place my wire under, bring it round to the side. Now I'm going to tie it in along the side, not along the top, but along the side of the fly. I'm going to put two locking turns in there. And then I'm going to take my tie-in thread all the way back to the base. There we go. Tying uh, the ribs in. You can put that to one side for the moment. Worry about that a bit later. Um, the body itself. Um, the body itself. I'm going to use um, the dubbing that I've made from the hairs ears. Um, and here it is. It's in these um, little containers. You can see there's a there's a rust coloured one there that I've made up. I've got an olive one as well. Um, and uh, this this literally. Has been made from sort of just that little patch. Um, oh, I don't know if you can see that. Where is it? That little patch. Um, so, so it makes a massive amount of dubbing. Um, and I whizzed it up in my coffee grinder. 
um, and I still get the guard hairs, but I, but it gets it's much finer and it's much easier to dub. Um, and I'll, I'm just going to offer it up, offer it up onto um, my tying thread. Um, and I often find a little bit of saliva, middle finger and thumb, and just tease it on so it so it felts itself so that it because we're not getting it to stick we get it's a felting motion um, and if you get any thick sections just tease them out there we go it's thicker in the middle there it's not too much of a problem i want to get it so that at the base it's thinner and as we move up towards the middle we're going to make it thicker so i'm just going to put in another turn now this is where i can then really go to town on tightening that dubbing noodle on it goes there we go now i'm going to work my way every two or three turns just tighten the dub up oh, there we go and i'm going to take my dubbing up to two thirds. I want need just need a little bit more, just to get a little bit of the profile I'm after. I want it sort of carrot shaped, but not overly in your face carrot shaped. I'm gonna dub it on another little bit of dub. Up we go. There's absolutely nothing wrong with then dubbing back over the dub you've already put on about halfway and then bringing it back and we can see that we're building up a decent amount of dubbing there. Okay, um, and now we can rib this. So here's the rib. Um, you can do it in a number of ways. Um, I like to do it the opposite way to the, the way in which I put my thread on and my dub on so it doesn't fall between but I do like to put in a little turn just at the base there right at the bottom um, it's just an affectation and then equal turns one two I'll probably get three or four three four and then finish with your rib and then just a couple of locking turns there straight i like to straighten it out along and then a couple of big turns tightens it right down hold on to the thread and then worry off your rib and then just do a little bit of tidying up and making sure that you haven't got any big steps in there and that's looking all pretty good so far okay okay right so thorax cover next so thorax cover now normally i'd use pheasant tail but it just so happens i've got shed loads of turkey um uh, and uh um, so I'm going to use I'm going to use some of this uh, this mottled turkey here, um, and I'm going to I'm going to use about ten barbules of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I've, I've just split it, and I'm just going to pull it out so that the tips meet. There we go. I'm going to come in with my scissors and. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I want it quite broad across the top. I'm just going to trim those off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take take these. You can see there it is. Okay, beautiful colours on these. And this is these are the tips. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pinch those tips together, and I'm going to offer. The turkey up to the top of the fly and then I'm just going to pinch wrap just to hold it down 
and we can just position it across the top tie it down it's going to come in and 45 degrees nip off and then continue just to tidy up no unsightly bulges and drops and and things like that and we got our thorax cover in now i'm going to go back to my dub here you don't have to you could use uh, an, another color you could use whatever you like here um, again mix it up try different things um, some things will work and you won't go back to them other things you'll you'll start catching fish you go right that's going i'm going to keep that one um, and i'm just going to offer this dub up um, i'm not going to be as forceful with this because i want it to be I want it to be really, really quite, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I really want it to, I really want the guard hairs to be, to be sticking out as much as possible, I suppose. And, uh, you know, um, the fox squirrel would be good on this. So I'm just going to build up a thorax. There we go. I'm not going to take it all the way up to the eye. I'm going to leave a space because... I'm going to be drawing that thorax cover over and I actually need some space to finish everything off. Just need a little bit more, just at that front end. There we go. Pull off that little guard here. I'm just going to draw it back because I noticed that I just needed a little bit just in there. There we go. There we go. Take that bit off. It's always worth inspecting, going back and having a look. Just making sure you're happy with what's going on. And then what I'm going to do is going to take my thor my thorax cover of turkey. And this beautiful mottled brown. And I'm just going to bring it across the top. And hold it across the top into position. I'm just going to take my thread and just drop it over the other side and lock it in and just be just check and make sure I'm happy with where it is. Could be a little bit longer. So I'm just going to take that bit out. Just put a little bit more dub in. So just by putting that one little drop lock turn in, I was able to check. And I didn't have to undo loads. There we go. Make it a little bit longer. I had plenty of space to play with. Much rather have space to play with than, than cram that eye. There you go. Bring it across. Ah, that's much better. Nice longer thorax, longer thorax cover. Put a second locking turn in. Just a quick look like that. Hold it up. One underneath. One on top, two on top. Now I'm going to come in, I'm just going to nip off the turkey. I also find the turkey, the turkey is less bulky as well than the pheasant tail. Um, and then from the head backwards, I'm just going to build up a nice red head that also gives it sort of a trigger point as well. Nice red head. And we're into our whip finish. So one, two, three. And we'll finish there. There we go. Trim that off. Now, because this is supposed to look scruffy, I'm going to come in with... A dubbing rake and give it a nice little comb out. Be careful though, you don't rub it across the top of the turkey at this point because it, it is still a little bit fragile and it can 
it can just lose its integrity and break. And there we go for that one. Now, it wouldn't be me if I then didn't go, you know what, I'm going to put some resin on this. So um, what I'm going to do is going to take my, take my Golf Classic um, and just make sure I know where my torch is while I'm doing this. Um, there we go. And I'm just going to take a dubbing needle and I'm just going to apply the resin, a little blob of resin. to the tip of my dubbing needle there we go now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to from the from the back forwards i'm going to dab it just on the thorax cover towards the head and just manipulate it with the needle point so we get a nice domed effect Across the top and then I'm going to zap it there we go so gold ribbed hairs here with a slight twist and it's got some resin there at the top and it's weighted um, it will sink really well um, this will catch fish um, final thing I always like to do and I've said this time and again because I was annoyed with certain other resins is that I'll just get my Sally Hansen and just run a little bit across and um, That'll harden, it'll keep it clear, um, it'll stop it if it was ever going to be tacky, which I don't get that with golf, but it might. And there we have it. So gold ribbed hairs here. Um, nice proper hairs here, yeah. Nice proper hairs here. Um, and uh, um, do them in lots of different colours. Um, uh, you know, um, if you just want to put a bead on the front, put a bead on the front, miss out the thorax cover and the thorax, and just build up that nice tapered um hairs of your body perfect there we go right okay well i'm just gonna have a little drink oh it's only squashed tonight let's have a look and see what uh what we've got on here let's have a look uh, let's have a look. <laughs> no, it's not wrong, Dave, that you're listening to to I Love to Boogie by T-Rex. It's just showing your age, I think. Okay. Right, okay, let's go um, into our, our third fly of the evening. Um, whizzing through these. Um, third fly of the evening here, folks. Um, and our third fly um, is my take I suppose on a uh, on that classic Walker's Mayfly, um, but with again with lots of uh, lots of little twists to it, and, and it, it, it's you don't have to tie it like this. And if I was tying lots of them, I tie them in the more traditional way because they'll just be quicker. Um, but I just love the look of this one, and um, and it's quite an, a fun one to challenge um, yourself to tie. Okay, so for this, I'm I'm going to move. I've got a different thread. So here, I've got this beautiful, and this is absolutely gorgeous. And we sell this um, at Lost Lake Fly as well. Um, this is a, a nano silk, twelve or, but it's this beautiful copper colour, um, and I've been using it in 
you know continually and i have to find reasons not to use it at the moment um it's strong it's it it lies flat the only the only issue i ha ever have with nano silk is that it can be very slippy um, and that's something just to just to watch out for so straight away i'm going to come in and like i did before on the last fly i'm going to tie on about a mil two mils away from the eye to leave myself a guide and in touching turns i'm going to take my thread all the way down in line with where the barb would be there you go and then i'm just going to take my thread up to halfway again so you can see that there's consistencies in the tying for many of the pans particularly these nymphs now really important scalpel for nano silk don't use your best scissors because it will blunt them okay um now for this particular mayfly let me just find the right box because i've got them all in little boxes um strangely i'm going to use white marabou um bear with me it, it does have a reason what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take about a centimetre of these fluffy bits from the side. You don't want a massive amount. Centimetre is about enough. There you go. Just trim that. I've got all the points, the tips. Well, I was about to say I've got all the tips um, all together there, but that's rubbish. Let's start again. Um, Let's go back to that, draw it out, cut, I'm going to cut on this, I'm not going to pull because I want to keep those tips together, that's better, much much better, and it's the tips that I want, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them in and they're just going to sit as a tail was part of the tailing of the mayfly and pinch turn pull down on the up and then tighten it all the way through there you go and then i'm going to take my thread all the way back up now i'm going to trap down this marabou to about two thirds of the way there we go to where the thorax is roughly going to start and then bring myself back down again i'm just going to trim that off right next <sighs> got to use some pheasant i got these beautifully dyed coloured pheasants tails here i've not used this colour yet this is sort of a pickricky um, um uh, yellow so uh, i'm going to use this one today um just because i've not used it um and I've got, i want them i want some nice long sections and again i want the tips to meet so i'm just going to pull it out so that they're 90 degrees to the stem and i want about eight pieces of pheasant tail for this and I'm then going to tie that in as an over tail over the the marabou lock it down and bring it back there we go so it's sitting on the top as we're looking at it and then i'm going to take my thread again like we've done on the other flies keeping that even underbody and back down again trim off and the 
are in. Um, the rib on this, I'm going to use um, copper. And so this is Semperfly uh, 0.2 mil. Um, it's a great soft wire. Um, it gets great segmentation. I'm going to use my wire cutters just to trim that. And then I'm just going to take my tying thread a little bit further up. There we go. Under and around as before. Tie it down along the side. All the way to the base of the tail. There we go. And we can just forget about that at the moment. Now I'm going to go back to back to my pheasant. I want another section of pheasant. Now you could say time and you could say pheasant by using um, the the bit that we've cut off. Um, but I often find it's a bit fiddly. Um, I want about eight to ten. Again, I want the back to be quite broad. And there we go. So the tips are all together. Now I'm going to tie these in at the, as the tips towards the front and the eye. Pinch loop, pinch turn. Bring it back to the base of the tail. Keep checking to make sure you've brought it right all the way back. And then we're going to take the tying thread gently all the way up to where we want the thorax to start. And we're starting to get a tapered body here without with just the materials we're adding in without having to add in too many wraps. So 45 degree nip. And just tidy that up. And we're going to come all the way back again. Back to our marabou. Now, Mayfly nymphs, if you watch them when I've been doing kick studies, riverfly studies, um, they've got these beautiful gills that flutter on the sides. So we're going to try and mimic those a little bit. Could use ostrich for this running at the sides. Um, it's just a bit fiddly. So I'm just going to, I'm going to stick with my good old marabou. And I'm going to take, uh, the fluffier the better for this, for the marabou. Um, and again, I want about a centimetre to a centimetre and a half of our marabou again Ooh, there we go done that and there it is there's our marabou but this time i'm going to reverse it and i'm going to tie it in at the tips now the tips will often um spread out so a little lick get them all to stick together and then Pinch wrap up, holding it to the side onto the top, and then we're going to tie that down towards the base and then come up and just tidy up to the thorax about two thirds all the way up. Now, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to wrap the marabou as a body material and I want it to sort of twist as i'm doing it because what that does if you can just see it, it it just makes the little tiny barbules just stick out on the marabou and i want those to as we get closer up towards the the thorax to actually mimic more of the gills on the mayfly there we go over over Lock it down. There we go. Oh, don't want it to spin that much. Come in 45 degrees. No excess bulk. And if we do get any, we're going to tidy that up. There we go. So you can probably see from there, we've got these 
these pseudo gills sort of appearing here. So we're sort of mimicking the natural. Then I'm going to take the back section here across the top, keeping it so that it doesn't fall side to side. Pull down quite hard on the nano silk. Now this is why nano silk is great because it'll take that extra tension that we're applying to really bed it down and keep it in place. There we go. Forty-five degrees. Tidy up in the thorax area. There we have it. So we've got our thorax or our abdomen cover. So the, the shell back of the abdomen. And then we've got this, these little gills that are sticking out. Now for the rib. So the rib for this, this is a little affectation. Um, literally, I'm going to come in and I'm going to put a turn, one turn at the base of the tail and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to put in a second turn at the base of the tail to really highlight it as a for some segmentation and then I'm going to rib and I'm going to start off with my my turns relatively close together so the first two about a mil one mil apart and then as I move into the next ones I'm going to make them slightly further apart spreading out and, and sort of imitating that elongated mayfly abdomen on the nymph lock that down take my wire lock it in Worry it off, tidy it up. And we got this nice segmented ribbing that's going on here. Now, back to that's the wrong one. Now, back to our pheasant. So, need a thorax cover for this. Okay, so a thorax cover, we're going to use pheasant for this. Um, and I'm just going to do exactly the same as I've done before. I'm going to pull out, I want about 8 to 10 of these barbules. It's quite, you know, their thorax covers are quite robust on these little nymphs. And if you've not spent any time recently maybe getting out and looking at them doing a little bit of a pond dipping absolutely suggest you do so because um, it's great now I'm gonna tie this in tips first um, am I gonna, yeah I'm gonna tie it in tips first but I want to judge it so that because I'm gonna use those tips and I'm gonna push them back to form legs so I'm just going to hold it in, thumb on the top, Ooh, I lost a bit then, thumb on the top, pinch, and just hold it in place, two locking turns so that I can just judge, yep, I always like to think what I always try and do when, I, when I'm forming these legs like this is the the amount that I want over the eye of the hook is always far more than I think. So um, I'd always I'd prefer them to be slightly longer legged than shorter legged, to be fair. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my tie-in thread. There we go. I 
and we've for, we've got our thorax cover, cover ready to go. We've got our legs ready to go there. Just need to finish off the thorax. So we're going to go back to the white marabou again. Um, don't want a massive amount for this, so about half of what we used before. So we used about a centimetre and a half before, so about three quarters of a centimetre. Um, same process. Get the tips together. A little bit of moisture to help stick them together. Pinch wrap onto the top. Hold it in to play. Come in. I'm just going to trim this off a bit early because it's easier to then lock them down. Ready. And I'm going to take, now for these, I'm actually going to twist my marabou. I'm touching turns. I'm going to form my thorax. So I've got more gills there. Gills are plenty on these little little mayfly nymphs. You can add weight to it in the same way that we did with the hairs here. Um, absolutely fine. So they are burrowing nymphs mainly. Um, so if we're going to find them quite deep, um, high protein packets as all mayflies are. Just tidy up that, that front section. Okay, so next stage, I'm going to form the legs. So I'm just going to take, I'm going to split these. So there were eight barbules. So if I get four or so on either side, it doesn't matter if you get slightly more on one and less on the other. And I'm just going to draw them back and draw them down. And then tie them down so they point backwards and I'm going to take my thorax cover and bring it across the top there we go I'm just going to tidy up this front section And then just form this nice head. Now with nano silk, you've got to put a lot more turns to form the head because it's so so fine and so thin. Um, don't worry if the head looks quite large because actually it does on the insect itself. Um, so and then we're going to come in um, and one, two, three. Finish there, find my scalpel. There we go. Let's have a look at my my legs. There we go. Legs either side. And then good old Vineyard Celia clear varnish. Better than for this better than than using Sally Hansen um, because it will soak into the wraps or Sally Hansen will sit on the top and form a shell as we get this wonderfully all across the bottom there we go and there we have it is our third fly of the night um, it's a variation of a mayfly um, you can see there's lots of steps on this and and, and um, as I was saying you know normally if I was just tying it I'd just put in the uh, uh, I just put the pheasant tail um, tail in um, and then I'd put in um, a brown um, thin piece of floss for the rib might use some gold uh, sorry some uh, some copper um, and then I'd use some uh, dubbing probably to build up the body and then go through the thorax process um, but I just like this one it just looks good um, and uh, it's a fun one to tie and it's a good one um, you know if you want to display a fly as well it's always a good one for, for display
Okay. As always, I'll take photos of these guys after I've finished tonight, and then we'll get those up tomorrow, um, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, slight little break for me. Um, let's have a look and see. Um, Oh, Graham's here. All right, Big G. That's cool. That's cool. Thank you guys for all your kind words on this. Right, now, our final fly of the night, if I can find the box that I put everything in. What do I do with it? Well, maybe we won't. The final fly of the night is going to be the um, a mayfly. Uh, I'll put it down somewhere gone so I'll find it in a minute and um, the final fly of the night is going to be a mayfly um, and it's going to be it's going to be you know we, we've just tied a mayfly nymph what is it going to turn into what's it going to look like um, and as I said earlier I had everything in nice little boxes and I've now mislaid one of them it'll be here never mind I'll find it I just need to grab some grab some hooks then So here we go. Um, we're going to use. Normally, I, for this, I would use um, a, um, a partridge hook, um, an ideal dry, nice long shank. Um, for this, we're going to we're going to substitute in a longer shanked nymph hook for this, just to show you the tie, um, on the basis that I don't know what I did with the uh, the other bit. Um, and I'm going to use some um, some brown. Uh, waxed thread from Semperfly um, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to lay down a little body of thread for about half so far and bring my thread back up to here now there's a reason for that and the reason is we're going to put in a CDC parachute post um, there we go so i've got some got some cdc here um uh in a big bolt pack just be aware with bolt packs is that you get lots of little tiny ones tiny feathers as well and you know they're great for parachute posts but when you want the, when you want bigger feathers for other things they can it can be really frustrating um so i'm just going to come in and i'm going to take out three or four feathers in this instance i think we'll go three three feathers because they're quite bulky um and i'm going to align them so that the tips are all going the same way and i'm going to lay them over the front of the eye so that when they sit up I'm just going to judge how tall they're going to be there we go I always want a little bit more and I'm going to tie those down I'm going to come in 45 degrees nip off at the base and then securely tie those down there we go. And I'm going to lift them up. And I'm going to put a dam of thread in front. I've actually got, I've got a bit of space to play with there. So I'm just going to tighten those down again. There we go. This, this is our CDC parachute post. But I need to prepare it. So to prepare it, I'm literally just going to hold these up. And... I'm going to take my tying thread keeping my tension I'm going to take it up 
and then back down. Not big exaggerated ambitious movements because it will just slide and slip off and then I can finish off building up my little thread down just by here. There we go. Nice little parachute post in, ready to go. Okay. Um, oh yeah, all the cool kids have this top, but the always salt water, salt water ones. You know, particularly if you're part of the salt water dogs. That's us. Um, so there we go. Um, and for this pheasant for the tail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take six or so barbules here it's exactly six pull those off and i want a quite a nice long tail because the mayfly's got long tails so i want the tail to be as, at least as long as the body so on it goes trap it down take it up to in line with the barb you can see that it's splaying out already and then take this up take this all the way up to the to the parachute post snip now i'm going to put a rib on this i do like to rib um my a lot of my dry flies and I like to rib them um, on the basis that tea, you know, these fish will hit them really hard. And I like to reuse my flies. I like to resurrect them. And if they've been destroyed on a first take, which sometimes happens, I can't reuse them. And uh, then I have to spend more time at the vice and less time fishing. Um, so I like them to be robust. I like them to last. I like them to take multiple fish if I can. So I'm going to use really fine 0.1 mil um, Semperfly um, uh, this is copper wire um, and I'm just going to bring copper wire in underneath the thread, catch it in on the side, hold it tight, bring my tying thread all the way down to the base and then about halfway back up again. Now I'm just going to grab another pheasant tail just the colour ah oh, there it is just to change the colours I'm going for this beautifully beautiful green here for the for the uh, uh, for the body of the mayfly um, and again I'm going to take six or so little barbules bring them out 90 degrees so that the tips meet and pull those off and tie them in at the tip there we go bring that all the way back down to the base and then all the way back up to just before well all the way back up to the to the parachute post now as if you were forming the uh, body of a, um, a pheasant tail, um, I'm just going to wind these beautifully green fibres up the body. Apologies for that. Somebody sent me a friend request. Um, and I'm just going to tie that off. You could use dubbing for the body. In fact, you can use whatever you like. Change it up. And again, I'm going to rib in the opposite direction. I'm going to make my turns tighter towards the tail. And gradually space them out to indicate the increasing age of that 
of the abdomen of the fly. All the way up. Into the base of the, the parachute post. And even take it past that, really secure it in. Because that will also give the base of the parachute post a little bit of extra strength. A bit of wire just there at the bottom. And then worry that off. So we've got a nice, nice body, nice tail. Now we've got to form a bit of a thorax. Um, so for this, I'm going to go for the ever so trusty um, Andrew Scruffy dubbing. Um, we've got greens and olives on here. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, with a colour that's called Appleby Olive. It's one of my favourites because it's got bits of blue in it as well and and all sorts. I'm going to take a pinch of this. I'm just going to form a dubbing noodle, not too tight, two turns, just tighten it up a little bit and then sort of a figure of eight movement. I'm just going to build up the thorax. I've got plenty of, plenty of space here, I've left plenty of space purposefully. Um, to build up this leggy structure at this end. There we go. I'll just keep building it up until you're happy, really. And then when I'm ready, I'll then take my thread and I bring it round the parachute post and leave it to hang on the opposite side. More on the reasons for that in a second. Okay, so we're gonna put a hackle on this, but it's not a conventional hackle. Um, I'm gonna go um, for uh, a rooster cape, but a, um, a Coq de Leon olive rooster cape feather. Um, they're, they're beautifully long and um, rigid but at the same time have a delicacy to them that you just can't often get with um, with a with a saddle cape um, on, a, on a regular cock um, and you can see how beautiful this is um, I've got a couple of these got another one you know in the drawer in different colors um, and I'm looking for I'm looking for a feather that I can use. And I'm just gonna, I want them to be quite long, so I'm just gonna judge. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect, so that was taken from quite close down towards the uh, towards the neck of the bird. You can see how long and, and sort of webby they are and the, and the dark and the light that comes off those. Um, I don't want this, this end here, so I'm just gonna come in and I'm just gonna trim that off. So I've got, my section Oop. here got a little bit of damage to it there but that's not going to make a bit of a any difference and then i'm just going to gently stroke back these end bits here because now what i'm going to do is i'm going to form a little comb so that there it is little comb so that when i offer it up into my thorax area here there we go. It's going to bite. Ooh, just got that caught. There we go. Ooh, what's that done there? There we go. It's just going to bite. And then I'm just going to hold it up. And then it's going to come round. Use that stem to add strength and all the way back down again. Deep into the into the thorax. And I'm just gonna nip off that end bit there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my feather. And I'm going to wind it around my post in 
touching turns down towards the thorax. So that's two, three, four, five, six, touching turns. And I'm gonna take my thread and work it along the base and trap in that feather. Notice that I'm moving my thread, wiggling my thread up and down so that I'm not trapping in too many bits of the feather. I'll trim off as we go along there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my CDC here and just split it and just pull it down so it pushes the cock de Leon down into there. Now what I'm going to do is going to take my feather there. Now what I can do here is I could add a little bit more dubbing. So let's let's try it that way. So you, what you could do is you could tie it off and whip finish around the um, uh, the post, which is fine. Um, but because of the way in which I've tied it in, I've left it so that I can actually put a little bit more dubbing on like this. And take it round and just hold everything up and away and just round the front. And just add a couple more turns just to hold the front up and then I can form a head. more traditional head on the fly and then come in my whip finish tool hold back the cock de leon there we go scalpel and you could put a bit of um bit of varnish on the head if you like I tend not to on my dry flies um, and then you have a nice little parachute mayfly um, that is going to sit in the surface very much like spinners would um, and it'll sit right in that surface you've got a little sighting post um, with the with the cock de leon here um, you could use antron if you like um, what you can also then do is trim that really low. Not so low that the hackle comes off, but, but low enough so that you don't get a sail effect on it, but just so that it sits that much deeper into the water. Um, and that'll take fish. But then, don't they love mayflies? Right, okay. I don't know about you guys, that's four four flies in um, what just over an hour and a half actually that went, that went quite quickly um, and uh, and I hope you've, uh, you've you can take some some ideas from those and you can give things a go um, and just try new things that's what I always do I'm always looking at new things and uh, the this video will be up on um, the YouTube channel as well I'll put a link to it um, and um, along with all of the others um, and if you've got any questions feel free to come back to me um, if you have a look at the youtube channel like and subscribe because that's uh, it's always good for my own ego but also uh, you know it helps the you know, people watching it um, you know every now and then you know it makes you want to put more stuff up and um, if there's anything in particular you'd like to see tied give us a shout um, more than happy to tie um, anything that anybody wants to see i think paul you want you want a wolf pattern don't you um, I have to dig out a couple of things for that. Um, so ultimately, um, you know, we'll get wolf patterns in. Um, I've got this tiny little pattern I tied up earlier that's going to be going to feature in one of our sessions as well. Um, so this detached body little bubble emerging olive as well. Let's go into uh, going to appear. Okay. Um, and this is such a simple pattern to tie it is unbelievable but it will float like a cork and it will take lots of fish um have a great weekend 
Uh, we'll be back again next week. Watch out for the uh, for the links. And uh, and it's been a pleasure. And uh, stay safe, everybody. <laughs>